Mrs. McCall is a wonderful candidate for a lot of reasons. You know, when I think about some of our best teachers that we have here at Greenfield Central High School, you know, I think about people that are kid friendly, people that, that work hard, that go that extra mile for students. You know, Mrs. McCall is, is not just a wonderful classroom teacher, but she also is here every day, or every Tuesday and Thursday after school in Learning Lab trying to help kids with math. She's our student council sponsor. She's involved in a lot of the great things that we do here. Every year when we do our Influential Educator Night, she's always somebody that gets nominated a few times. Uh, she's just a wonderful person and a great teacher. She's somebody that I think about who has found kind of her authentic voice with teaching. And so I think kids see that and they know that she's genuine. I think that goes a long way. I think talking about learning for all and all for learning, you know, Mrs. McCall is somebody who really embodies what we want with our students. Uh, you know, she has classes with some of our, our top students and she has classes with some kids who you know struggle a little bit more with math and she's able to, to teach all those kids she's able to reach those kids she's able to engage those students so she really she really does she you know if she doesn't reach a student she takes that very personally and so I think that's part of why she's such a great teacher I know she puts a lot of pressure on herself and she works hard and she, she goes the extra mile for those kids I think Mrs. McCall has an impact on our students in a lot of different ways. You know, not just making them feel valued and making them feel seen. I think that's one of the big things we hear with Mrs. McCall and her students is that they they feel like she cares about them and she gets to know them and understand what they're going through. You know, she's not just there to teach them math. She's there to, to be a, a good moral compass for them and to be someone that they can talk to. You know, we hear that a lot, not just with her, her students in class, but also with the students in student council as well. So. She's a great role model and she's somebody that, that is very dependable and just somebody they can go to if they ever need anything. She is one of those quiet leaders and I think that's one of the reasons she is such a great role model for her colleagues. I think you know, Sarah is somebody who is going to work hard. She is going to be a positive influence in the room. She's going to listen. She's going to communicate with people. She just does a really great job all around. You know, if, if you have your department chair who is Working hard is not complaining, who is every, there every day with a smile on her face. I think that goes a long way. But I also think she is respected by her peers, and I think that she goes that extra mile to make sure that she's developing a relationship with those teachers as well. So they know that they can come to her if they need anything. A lot of the same things that we've talked about, really, when you think about inside the classroom and outside the classroom, you know, I think about, um, you know, we had a, a dance that we put together with student council uh, in the winter. It was not something that we originally had planned. It was something her kids came to her and said, hey, it's something we'd like to do, and it's something that the kids would want to do. And so she sacrificed a lot of her time and energy to, to help get that organized and put it together and make sure that it was a success. Um, you know, I think about things like trunk or treat that we do every fall. She's very organized in that. And again, a lot of time, a lot of energy on things that don't belong with a math teacher. It's just something she wants to do for her kids, and it's something that's important to them. So she really tries to, to nurture those students and what they want to try to bring the best out of them. Um, to me that statement has kind of two meanings to it. The first one, I feel like it is my job as a teacher to make my lessons accessible to all students no matter where they come in, what level they're at, and try to help them take something away from that lesson, whether in my calculus classes that's kind of the in-depth knowledge or just the basic understanding of the content that we're going over, just trying to get every student to be able to walk out of here gaining something. Um, I know not all students are going to be using math as they leave here and go on um, further in life, which is fine, um, but there's plenty of other things that we go over in here, just that problem solving skill and that um, perseverance going through the problem, so hopefully some of them just take that, but again, just making sure that all students are really gaining something. Um, the other part of the statement to me is the fact that all of us here in our corporation, whether it's from kindergarten up to my calculus class, all of us are working together to really help create students that are lifelong learners to help them um, be successful as they leave the classroom, but we all have to work together to accomplish that. Um, I think my class is kind of just in the nature of themselves. They walk in the door and they're already kind of out of their comfort zone. Um, in my Algebra 2 class, I would say that at that level, I try to um, throw in a few extra like little projects that are things that maybe aren't quite as guided as what they're used to. So they have to come up on their own and be creative, which in a math classroom is not always what's happening, so kind of pushing them to combine those two things, the math and the creativity. Um, 
in AP Calc, like I said, I feel like they walk in the door and they're already kind of pushed out of their comfort zone. They are used to having classes where we're given types of problems and we just learn how to solve them and then we repeat that process again later. But in um, calculus, it's not so much that. You're learning the basics and then you have to learn how to apply that. So learning that application skill um, in my class is all kind of pushing those students a little further than they're used to. Um, I feel like a lot of the kids that I have um, love math in general and love kind of going beyond what we do in here. So anytime a student comes to me um, with a question that is even beyond what I know or what we're teaching in this class, um, I encourage them to kind of go out on their own and research that themselves and bring that back to me and maybe even teach me something new that I didn't know about the content and above and beyond what we've done in here. Um, I hope that my students um, take ownership in their learning and want to be successful for themselves, not just for the grade in the class um, and for me, but for themselves. And um, in our calculus class, you know that we, we start the year by reading letters from last year's class um, with some advice, and then I have my students write goals, and we reevaluate those goals and kind of see how we're doing. And then at the end of the year, we just repeat that process. We have some, the, my students write letters to next year's class to kind of help just create this, hopefully, best learning experience um, in the future for those students. Right. Um, I think one of my biggest kind of concerns is the shift in the responsibility of the education and the learning process. Um, those of us that go into education, we know that it's our job to help students um, and to create those lifelong learners and to have them walk out of our classroom having a good experience and having learned something. But I feel like too much of the responsibility has shifted completely on us and students are having less and less of that responsibility on them. Um, which concerns me because, as I kind of mentioned before, math isn't necessarily the biggest thing that I want students to walk out of my classroom having gained. Um, perseverance and even just time management and all of those kinds of skills, which I feel like we're shifting away from that and it's not as much of a responsibility on students, which that part is what concerns me. Um, since I've started teaching here at the high school, I've been the student council sponsor, so um, I've done that now for 13 years. And within that, I'm creating, hopefully, better leaders within the student population. So hopefully that is um, contributing to our community in that way. And then um, the past couple of years, I've also stepped up as the math department chair. So that has definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone and um, that leadership role and kind of standing up for what I think is best for not only our teachers, but for our students as well. So I think the first influence that I had was um, a high school teacher that I had. I had him for Algebra 2, Physics, and Calculus. Um, I've always known, I think my whole life, that I wanted to be a teacher. It's just something that I loved. I loved school. Um, and then I eventually wanted to help students. Um, and, and it goes back to that teacher. I feel like once I got to his classes, I knew that that was the type of teacher that I wanted to become. We had fun in his class, but we always walked away. We learned every day, but we still had fun. Um, a lot of us took his classes because he was the teacher. He was just an amazing teacher. He was an amazing man, and I always kind of strive to become that type of person. Um, but I think more recently, my biggest influence is just my students that I have. I want to be the best that I can be in order to help them in their futures become the best that they can possibly be. Um, she's honestly one of the best math teachers I've ever had. Um, she's very helpful when explaining everything. Um, she's very willing to answer as many questions as possible. And there's Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's math help after school, and she's always willing to help out. Um, when she's teaching her lessons, she's very understandable. And just something about her teaching is a way that I can like clearly understand. Um, I'm very like like a visual person, and she does a good job on like explaining that very well. Um, I've had Mrs. McCall two times since my sophomore year and she's always been a really strong supportive teacher. She's always been willing to take the extra steps to help me understand the content and she's always been extra willing to stay after school or do whatever she can to help me be a better learner. So she's always she's really kind and compassionate. She's understanding but also she's willing to push you even when you aren't willing to push yourself. 